Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Rages. So the first Alien movie was released on June 22nd, 1979, over 45 years ago. And now in 2024, we get Alien Romulus. And I can tell you, as with so many screenwriters, the first Alien script was the one that helped define my writing style. Very few screenplays have been written that come close to the perfection that is Alien, written by legend Walter Hill. Now there's a huge controversy over this, but the final production script was penned by Hill, despite Dan O'Bannon getting the IMDb credit. If you've never read a screenplay and you're going to read just one in your lifetime, that script should be Alien, because it is simply genius in how it conveys huge impact with so few words. But this video is about Alien Romulus, and it's written and directed by Fade Alvarez. There are some major things that I have to point out in this movie, and I'll do it spoiler free. And at the end, I'll give you my score out of 10, so stick around. Are you ready? And by the way, my name is Danny Alex. I'm a screenwriter here in Los Angeles, and I've written several award winning screenplays, such as The Sicken, which we are currently working on producing. So in my mind, there really are only two Alien movies worth watching. The first one is the first one, Alien. And the second one, well, it's the second one. It's Aliens, written and directed by none other than James Cameron. Put it on visual. There is also Prometheus that had a completely different style and writing intent. But it's close to being a movie worthy of similar accolades. It dropped the ball in certain parts of the story that, if it was done right, could have made it an amazing movie, but it still had some interesting, thought-provoking ideas. I actually like Prometheus a lot more than most people gave it credit for. Yes, there are some missteps, but it tried developing some very interesting sci-fi concepts that just didn't come together convincingly before the end, but overall, I thought it was very interesting. Now, with Alien Romulus, the individual pieces of the story differ from the previous movies, but there are a lot of similarities between them. A big reason for this is because of how you have to set up a horror thriller movie. Your main characters need to be isolated with no apparent way to escape with a powerful antagonist trying to kill them in disturbing, gruesome ways. An antagonist so powerful that fighting back seems almost futile. And Romulus, just like Prometheus, did have some questionable creative choices at the end that I don't think worked out as well as Fade Alvarez was hoping for, but we'll get back to that in a bit. What he did do is establish well-defined characters in an environment that puts them into a non-stop thrill ride. Each passing scene fires up the tension and stakes while still giving enough downtime in between the fast-paced action so you don't ever feel overwhelmed by it all. Go on. The screenplay is well thought out with a story that uses its characters extremely well. The main storyline circles back to the original Alien movie with some repurposed memorable one-liners used sparingly throughout you'll probably notice if you watch the movie. What Alvarez does in Romulus is create an ever-increasing level of tension from scene to scene. Each scene flows extremely well from the previous one and he's able to dial up the tension throughout the entire movie. It's well thought out with scenes that seamlessly connect using plot devices that make sense. At the center of the plot is Rain's relationship with Andy. Now this becomes the main character arc that we see develop through to the end and gives Rain certain strengths and weaknesses that plays into her decisions right up until the third act. And I have to say that the trailer did not do this movie justice. My expectations were set pretty low going into this movie, which probably made for a better experience overall. You know, when you don't expect much, it's easier to be surprised either way. The way Fate Alvarez was able to weave in so much tension was really quite awesome. It made the movie. He cleverly used gravity in a lot of scenes, which became an integral part of the plot and story as it moved along. Uh! One of the best ways to create tension is to have some sort of time or countdown that places the characters in a do or die situation if something isn't accomplished in the time that's given. James Cameron, if you remember, he used this beautifully in Aliens at the very end. You now have 15 minutes to reach minimum safe distance. Alvarez did so as well, but the problem I had with the way he used it was that it didn't happen closer to the final climax. It was part of the second act that added great tension, but it wasn't what defined the character's action right up until the end. But it was well used. Well, you make a good point. 
Something else that I was pleasantly surprised about was my concern that this was going to turn into just another girl boss movie in a cheesy Ray Palpatine kind of way. But I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't. The main character, Rain, was extremely well written and her relationship with her artificial human played a key role in her entire story arc. Alvarez made use of this artificial person plot device in well thought out and clever ways. Overall, this was a pretty solid movie and leagues better than most of what Hollywood has been trying to shove down our throats over the last few years. But there are a couple of butts in this movie and they're pretty big. Oh God, is it bad? There are some things that give you a shake of the head and a oh man, not again about this movie. These are mistakes that seem to happen in every alien movie. It seems that these aliens, the xenomorphs, they're able to grow and develop faster and faster with each passing movie. We're down to a matter of minutes that it takes for the face huggers or ovomorphs, I think they're called, to lay their seed, combine DNA, burst out of a human, and then grow into a full-size xenomorph, all in a matter of minutes, literally just minutes. Now, I understand why the director Alvarez decided to do this, and I'm sure that he knew that it was going to be a point of contention with the audience. But he wanted a fast-paced, tension-filled movie where the story unfolds in a matter of just a few hours. So he had to overlook certain things, I get it. Regardless, it's something that you have to completely overlook or this movie and the entire Alien franchise will just not work for you. I also want to point out that the final scene was almost exactly as it was in Alien and Aliens. In the final fight, the Xenomorph is sucked into a vacuum of space in the final battle scene. It does feel predictable, but it was still satisfying. Romulus also had that Prometheus moment I talked about earlier at the very end with the what the fuck is that supposed to be kind of moment. You can decide for yourself, but for me, the final Xenomorph was not my favorite way to end this movie. Once again, it grew from a baby into a full 9 foot tall whatever the hell it is creature in literally 2 minutes. It felt rushed and unbelievable in how the final scene unfolded. Mind you, like it still worked out, but this franchise has to get away from aliens growing from a size of a kitten into a giant 9 foot tall alien creature in a span of 2 minutes. The CGI and special effects were all pretty good, except for maybe the last Xenomorph that came across feeling like a giant plastic doll at times. As far as entertainment value goes, Fade Alvarez did a good job weaving in a lot of interesting ideas in a way that allowed most everything to fit together quite well and to give an overall good movie experience. For me, it's right up there with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and Godzilla Cross Kong. It's a good, solid movie that gives great entertainment value while cracking open some interesting sci-fi ideas and making you think about life and the universe that we live in. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving Alien Romulus a score of 7.5. It's definitely worth a watch. And yes, you have to overlook how fast these alien creatures grow and reach adulthood. But hey, overall, this is a well-written, well-directed movie that also gives you some great CGI moments to keep you interested right until the very end. And the budget was only $80 million, so that's pretty impressive what they were able to do with that small of a budget. Well done. And that's all I have to say about Alien Romulus, and I will see you in our next video. Cheers!